Geometry Dash is a game where you die an insane amount of times. So, of course I had the genius idea of starting a new account with several goals. I want to beat 20 demons, 10 map packs, and eventually get to a thousand stars without dying once. Is this hardcore GD challenge even possible? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's start with the bane of this challenge. Stereo Madness. Before that though, I decided to get some free achievements and resources. Just destroy these icons, open these chests, and totally leave a like on Robtop's Facebook page. It's alright guys, I'm sure that was relevant 4 years ago when 2.1 released. This is level 1. I did a bunch of unnecessary jumping and straight flight to flex my expertise in this super serious cube game. All these triple spikes are closed in and this last ship is not too bad. There's far worse to come. Level 2 is back on track and it has to be the easiest level in this run. There's no hard coins and the traps are obvious, so easy. The third level is Polar Guest, which is very chill until this third coin. I should say, previously in this hardcore run I died twice. Both times were due to forgetting coin placements, so in this third run I had watched a replay for every level I didn't remember coin placements in. This is also a good strategy to prevent dying from traps later on. In Dryout, I defied the laws of physics and jumped over triangles. Insane, I know. I would pass it cleanly and finally I entered the base after base after base after base. This is attempt 5 and my soul nearly left my body until I nailed this jump and successfully grabbed this coin. At least after that it was easy pickings. For the next two attempts I ran can't let go. The second attempt was in practice mode which I still have a rule to not die in. I'm doing this because I'm getting sick of these default colors and I miss my signature red and white. Now I have the color red. And this handsome fella. Despite having many traps, the 7th level jumper really only has the stressful ship timing to deal with. It's no matter though. I made quick work of this level and unlocked the clickbait icon. The next two attempts is just a nicely packaged version of Michigan's triple trial. I have to beat Time Machine twice. Now you'd think a level named Time Machine would be this super awesome immersive adventure and no. Here's some triple spikes, and a portal that has gone missing for several years. Even Robtop neglects the existence of this poor thing. Once I beat Time Machine normally, I beat it a second time in practice mode to get white. And now, it's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Wait, are you kidding me? Did I read the achievements list wrong? Oh my god, jumped 20,000 times. Oh my god, we're never gonna get map mart icons. Yeah, I misread the achievement for how you got white and I got a useless color. Not gonna lie, Red and Scion with this icon is still looking pretty sick. Going forth is my 11th level cycles where I press this orb for no reason and just about grab this coin on the way. Also, while playing through some of these levels, I noticed some weird structures and oddly placed spikes. I know this isn't a level review, but why hasn't this been fixed in 6 years? Oh, I know why. The 12th level in my run X-Step is not one of my proudest achievements. This could have ended really badly. Look at what I do. When I did this I had felt like I signed my own name on the death note, but yeah, I'm just built different. Wouldn't recommend anyone else to do this though. I don't care if you've beaten the English dub of El Dorado. I don't care if you're a memory mastermind. This timing is uncomfortable. The rest is easy though. The only real issue with the 13th level clutter funk was the third coin. Although beforehand I had deeply analyzed the video showcasing where the third coin was, so I was promptly prepared. After making a quick victory out of this sawblade wasteland, I moved to my 14th level. Theory of Everything. Theory of Everything had two extremely close calls mainly revolving the first two coins. Only now while writing the script did I realize that I really didn't have to get all the coins but hey if we're advancing on this count as far as possible might as well go all in. For being the 15th level Electroman Adventures was really easy. Seriously the coin routes are easier than the real routes. This is aside from the second coin, but my 144Hz skill got me covered. My 16th challenge and first demon of the run would be Club Step, which we've gotten enough secret coins to unlock. Despite the orb memory and the monster mouths, I was able to clutch a victory over Club Step and you might be wondering how I've been able to do all these levels in a row. Basically I've had a lot of Geometry Dash accounts. Whether it be because of me switching devices, changing my account name, just deciding to beat random demons on my friends devices, or making a dumb mistake in pursuit of a $5 Clash Royale gift card, I've had a ton of experience with lesser levels. This means normally I'm not that good, but in a way this challenge fits my skill set to a T. Let's just hope I don't have to face Cataclysm anytime soon. I was actually more scared of the next two levels in this run, Electrodynamics and Hexagon Force due to their… quirks. This is due to the annoying icon part and this inconsistent duo part respectively, but no matter, I got Riot's icon and a creeper. That is awesome. 
For the first time in a while, blast processing is a massive decrease in difficulty. Really the only difficult part that you might see people struggle with is this dual wave coin, but that was fun. For level 20, I kept going forward and beat Theory of Everything 2, absolutely grazing the 81% ship. I was so happy I switched my icon. Level 21 was Geometrical Dominator, and despite this dark memory part and the scary intimidating rainbow sections, I beat it easily and it was merely the setup to the hardest challenge I would face yet. I stood back and took a break. Deadlocked would be my 22nd level and my 3rd demon. If I died here, I would have to slay many levels to return. These chomp laser guys, these teleportation portals, anything could ruin my run. Well, now we're nothing. In attempt 22 of this hardcore run, I passed what I was most scared of this wave spam part. After that, I collected the key from these solemn defenders of Deadlocked. I advanced through the memory-based poison fortress. I went through hell and back to slay the monsters and snag a coin. After spamming, maneuvering, and timing my way through these segments, I reached the final icon part. <sighs> nah, I'm just kidding, I survived. And I did it. That's a metric ton of achievements. More than anyone ever got for beating Tartarus. Level 23 is Finger Dash, which is normally super easy. In the past, I remember dying a stupid amount of times due to thinking that this yellowish structure was a jump pad. Anyone else? After beating Finger Dash, I had to look at the inevitably hardest part of this challenge in the eye. I went to the online tab and I had two options. I could have gone for map packs or gauntlet levels, and that would have been the smarter thing to do, but one of my goals was beating 20 demon levels. So, I checked the easy demon filter and started my battle with the most popular demon. Attempt 24 was the Nightmare by Jax. The Nightmare was easy, but I was a little stunned. I thought it would be cool if I had a little bit of a good luck charm. I realized that while I couldn't mimic the godlike icons of Cyclic or myself, my third best option was to make my normal cube a little sadistic. This is the icon combo of the mysterious Seri, a legend who at one point was considered unstoppable. In retrospect though, we all know he either hacked or just lied about his achievements. Anyways, I rolled into the lightning road with Hacker Drip, and once again it was a stupid decision. This is the fourth ever demon, and it was known for inventing flashing. Therefore, a ton of the level has a black background, and my icon combo clashes with this heavily. Heck, my gravity ball is half as visible in this part. This is still considered to be the second easiest demon though, so I got off scot-free. I didn't want to risk getting sabotaged by my own icon again, so I went with the fourth best icon, Rob Top. Despite being blessed with Rob Top power, I was stressed out during this third demon. Death Moon is generally a consistent level, but it's known for some gimmicks. The hitboxes in this wave part are more dodgy than this random deadlocked monster and their taxes. I've never been a major fan of this UFO, and this level is so long that the stress amplified over time. During this wave part, my brain transcended and I felt every emotion at once. And it was all topped off by extremely nervous clicks knowing that any one of these structures could kill me with the slightest touch. After passing this wave part, I literally started hyperventilating. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> there is no other challenge that can make an easy demon seem so undefeatable, so daunting, yet this one did it. I'd be interested to see if anyone else doing this challenge feels the same way, but who am I kidding? None of you will ever get to my level. After I beat Death Moon, it was time for me to beat a 27th level. This 27th level would be Mask 463's legendary creation known as Crescendo. I knew I had this level in the bag. It was an easier demon after all. I almost let my overconfidence get to me and I made two slip ups that had they been any slippier could have killed my run. In level 28, I went for Demon Mixed, which is just a poor recreation of most early easy demons. This included Sky Realm by Darnock, which I avoided in the hardcore run, but here it was a piece of cake. I had to watch a video because Demon Mixed has some annoying memory parts. One wrong turn and you'll also be mixed into the Demon Blender. Good pun, I know, no need to thank me. Anyways, level 29 I decided on Decode. It's an early 1.9 level which was initially considered to be very difficult due to this wave part. Since then the community's gotten better and this thing is rightfully an easy demon. No close calls here. In level 30, I was confident I could slay Dorbe difficult 4. I remember this being the first demon I took less than 100 attempts to beat, an achievement I was really proud of at the time. Everything went smoothly. The run went as it was supposed to until I flipped through this mirror portal. Are you f kidding me? All of my struggles, all my accomplishments, boiled down to this 
one moment. As the shopkeeper ignorantly talked down to me, I had a moment to reflect. Reflect on all the battles I won by the tiniest pixel. Reflect on the painful death I just faced. Reflect on the unfairness of it all. Despite everything, I died to something completely out of my control. In a way, I can't think of a more fitting way to end this hardcore Geometry Dash challenge. An inconsequential bug death at 26% in an easy demon is something any normal player would brush off, but in this run, it's life and death. I have two options now, to quit or continue. Well, if you know me, you'd know I have to refuse the former. No matter how much hours it takes, I will get revenge on this dreadful hardcore run. I will beat Dorbe Difficult 4, and who knows? Maybe one day I'll get Matt Mart Moore to a thousand stars. This is named after my second channel, which you should definitely subscribe to. You better stay tuned and subscribe because this challenge is going to get insane. This is only the beginning, so I hope you enjoyed and see ya. Also, shout out to RealVet, Alfiria, and my homies for reading the script. Links in the description below. See ya V2.